So we've just released two important resources that I want to cover over this episode and the next episode of McBlog. And they cover two key issues, sexuality and gender theory and indoctrination happening in our schools, and the new atrocious and flawed conversion therapy law. Let's check them out. So today I want to highlight a new resource that we've just released. It's on the new conversion therapy law, and it's a guide for parents, for pastors, for counsellors, as to what the law says and its implications. And we've also gone to a leading public law lawyer for advice, and we include their legal advice in the fact sheet. Uh, and to be frank, it's fairly disturbing reading. Now look, let's be clear. If conversion therapy means practices which are coercive, abusive, or involuntary, or things like electric shock therapy, then look, we can all agree such things are inhumane and must be condemned. But as been, has been shown, fortunately, these are not part of current practice, either in state institutions and certainly not part of any religious organisation. Even the Human Rights Commission admitted that there haven't been the complaints. They're not happening. But this new law is a solution going looking for a problem. And banning conversion therapy has expanded to mean stopping someone who experiences unwanted same-sex attraction or gender dysphoria from getting counselling or support of any sort that they themselves may desire. So in our fact sheet, we look at the definition of conversion therapy in the law. And interestingly, the terms sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression, ah, they're not even defined in the law. It's what the activists tell you. Uh, and then we examine the law as it relates to parents. And parents can be criminalized and liable up to five years in prison simply for affirming that their sons are boys and their daughters are girls. The law could criminalize the actions of parents who want to protect their children from the physical, emotional, and psychological harm caused by attempting to change their biological sex. And of course, this all comes at a time when the Tavistock Transgender Clinic in the UK is shutting down and up to a thousand families are preparing to sue the clinic. It comes at the same time as the FDA in the United States has slapped a warning label on puberty blockers because of the harm it can cause. And as countries that aren't exactly conservative countries such as Sweden, Finland and France move away from the affirmative model of believing the child's identity wishes and not challenging them in any way. But in New Zealand, that could be a crime. Uh, and the, the legal opinion says this, and I quote, There are significant consequences of these criminal offences, especially in circumstances where a prosecution is being brought against a parent for a conversion practice performed on their child. In that case, evidence would need to be brought by both the parent and child and potentially other family members as to the events that occurred to determine whether they meet the definition of a conversion practice as set out above. This has the potential to effectively tear a family apart as family members are forced to pick sides and act as witnesses on opposing sides of a criminal prosecution. We then look at the issues around what can be and can't be said around the use of puberty blockers and chest binders. What can you and can't you say to your children? What about the refusal to identify uh, a child as the opposite sex, a refusal to use pronouns other than biological sex pronouns? You know, do you have to call your child Z, they or them, they? And can you encourage your child to recognize and accept their biological sex? Look, as a parent, politicians should be ashamed that they have potentially criminalized these important discussions between parents and their children. Now, the fact sheet also contains discussions around criminalizing counselors, carers, and teachers, uh, and also around criminalizing faith-based schools and places of worship as well. Uh, and then it talks about criminalizing consent. Incredibly, the new law says that consent is irrelevant. Apparently, the mantra, my body, my choice, doesn't apply here. Those who dare to seek inner freedom and healing from unwanted behavioural or thought patterns will have nowhere to turn as a result of this new ban. The law oppresses and violates the right to seek whatever lifestyle you desire. So 
convincing people that they are a different gender to their biological sex. No, that's not conversion therapy, nor is it considered conversion therapy to encourage a person to explore and develop same-sex attraction. But if a same-sex attracted individual wishes to explore and strengthen a heterosexual attraction or lifestyle, or a person wishes to align with their biological sex, it could be illegal, subject to imprisonment to encourage them to do so under the law. And finally, we show that the legal advice clearly points out that the new law infringes on key rights in the Bill of Rights Act, but the politicians were willing to ignore those rights. Now, under this new law, people would be prevented from getting help to live the lifestyle they choose, if that lifestyle is heterosexual or based on their biological sex, and children could not be encouraged to embrace their biological sex. So while gender and sexuality is a supposedly fluid, activists want the law to stipulate that it can only go in the direction that they approve. Yet again, the state wants to dictate how you raise your children and even how you live your life. Now you can download this fact sheet from our website, familyfirst.nz. There's a number of fact sheets as you can see there. We're building on them. Learn about the new conversion therapy law for your own protection. But then join us as we work to protect families, protect places of faith, protect counsellors and protect health professionals from a flawed and dangerous law. Music